All right, everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. You're listening to a voiceover right now. Um, that is because I lost my audio for some reason. So we're doing two, three videos today, but we're doing them in three different segments. So the first video is we're taking the old stock oil pan out because the gasket needs to be replaced and putting a new aftermarket factory one in, which we cover in the second video, which will be, uh, we also talk about on the podcast, which is the unboxing and we talk about the benefits to the aftermarket oil pans. And then the third video is going to be a fuel filter, air filter replacement, kind of a simple re replacement, but not a lot of people know exactly how to do it. So I, we wanna cover that as well. So make sure you guys stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy this install video. A quick tip here I forgot to do before we lifted the truck up here is take your oil cap off. Uh, it's very important. It helps the oil flow out a lot faster. Letting that air in through the oil fill tube helps the oil push out a little bit faster, so don't forget All to right, do this. All right, so we've got to take the skid plate off first. It's 115 millimeter. Go ahead and take four bolts off. Once you take these, oh man, that is cool it, boys. That's a, <laughs> all right. We know that's an issue, so. Skid plate's off. Now, oil pan is right there. Right there. So what you gotta do, you gotta take these bolts off. Two here, two here, and there's nuts on the back side of each of those. You can see them right here. There's nuts on the back side. So take those off, drop this cross member down, and then you got access to your oil pan. All right, so we got an 18 millimeter. Yeah, this is a very weird plug. What if it's just to hold up the nut so you can't get something out of it? I think so. Look at Jim actually. It's a nice one. Decent. Where are your safety glasses? All right, so now we've got access here with that crossbar out to go ahead and take the pan out. Now we're just gonna go ahead and drain the oil out first and uh, take all these bolts up in here out. While we're taking the oil out, we're gonna change our oil. We're gonna put a new filter on. We're gonna go with the M1303A from Mobile. It's an extended life oil filter. I use this on all my Duramax trucks. It works really well. I highly suggest it. Make sure when you install it, you go ahead and add some oil to the, the rubber gasket to make a nice good seal. You're gonna go twist it on all the way and do a nice quarter turn. Don't wrench it on, please. All right, so Eric's gonna go ahead and take the rest of these out right now. Again, this is another voice voiceover recording. He's gonna take these out for us. As you can see here that the gasket is definitely leaking and it needs to be replaced. Again, we discussed in the podcast and the unboxing video of why we are doing uh, the full pan and not just the gasket, so make sure you check that out. You don't need So what I'm going right, so what I'm showing you right now is we're gonna back this bolt out a little bit. It's gonna be a 15 millimeter. It's just on the bottom of the transmission. Back it out just a little bit so you can get that trans that, that oil pan pulled out. All right. So the next step is you're gonna go ahead and. Take a scraper and scrape that old gasket off all the way around. Here's the factory pan, we've got the factory one out. Again, like I said in the beginning, we will be talking about the differences, or we did talk about the differences of the factory one versus the DMAX store one or other aftermarket oil pans. It's very important, you see here, we've got about a half quart of oil left in and you don't want that, it's a lot of dirt and debris. So again, listen to the podcast, 
watch that unboxing video link below so you can see the differences. All right, so now the next step we're gonna do is we need to take this old oil sensor out and we're gonna go ahead and put that in the new D-Max store uh, oil pan. You can see here we've got that Fumudo drain. Here is your part number for you guys. D-Max-OP-0110. This is 2001 to 2010. We did in an unboxing video and also talked about it on the podcast, the difference from the D-Max store and the factory one. So make sure you guys check that out. I will link that below for you guys. I'll link the video and also the podcast episode below for you guys. Um, it was a good little quick one. I think it was like maybe a six minute video, something like that. Yeah. So um, good quick video. Good, ins not inspirational, geez. Uh, good instructional video, uh, educational video on the difference of, of the two here. So definitely check that out. Let's go ahead and do the sensor. So that is a 10 millimeter on the sensor bolts. All right, so that is what the little part looks like. It's a pretty simple clip, kind of a pain to get off though, so. That was right around there, and so that's what we were kind of working on now. All right, so you just kind of push it through. You gotta put a lot of pressure on it. It'll pop, it'll definitely pop. So just keep that in mind. You'll feel that pop, so yeah. Now that's out, we're gonna go ahead and put it in the new pan. When you put it in the new pan, make sure you oil the O-ring on the new sensor when you push it in. It does require that in the instructions, and then you're just gonna hide it. They push it. Ooh, that felt good. Wow, did that feel good, huh? Just pops right in. There you guys go. Now you put the clip on. The pain in the ass of the clip. Tap her in. Then you have your 10 millimeter bolts, that's your two 10 millimeter bolts that you're gonna put on. So I will say when it comes to those two 10 millimeter bolts, get them on there nice and snug. There was no torque spec in the instructions. There probably is one online somewhere, but if, the, if, they, if d max Store didn't put in their instructions, don't worry about it, get it really nice and tight. Don't strip it off, don't go too crazy with it. Just nice and tight and it's just holding it in place. So it's that simple. Next, we're gonna go ahead, clean off the top of the oil pan to where we can lay down the new, um, gasket maker on top to be able to install this then. All right, so I will mention the new, new oil pan comes with new bolts, so keep that in mind. And I will say the instructions that D-Max Store supplies, they are really good instructions, you guys. I'm very impressed with these things. Um, comes with torque spec instructions, comes with the, uh, the torque sequence as well. Um, when it comes to this gasket though that we're putting on that Eric's getting ready over there, um, this gasket here, you gotta wait a minimum of five hours once you install this pan. And they want you to, the most amount that they really recommend is 24 hours. So I would say if you're doing something like this, you can wait 24 hours. So install it, wait 24 hours, then install or fill your oil. Instructions here, apply two to three millimeters wide of, of a bead sealant, sealing surface to the D-Max store oil pan. So come around here and you apply it two to three millimeters wide. I'm actually pretty convinced that these right here is your two to three millimeters. Um, I'm pretty confident. So basically just kind of fill it all up like that. All right, so Eric's got his bead on and uh, I gotta say he did a pretty good job. Definitely gonna wanna have some strong hands for that process. I do not <laughs> envy you at all. My hands that, hurt. that was a pain. So yeah, now the nice thing about this gasket maker, you guys, is you don't have to, you don't, you put it on, you don't have to like rush to get it on the truck. Um, a lot of people actually recommend that you kind of wait a little bit. I think some people recommend that you wait up to like, geez, isn't even, some people recommend that you put it on, you don't torque it down, you let it sit for like two hours and then you put it on. Um, it really isn't gonna make that big of a difference. But anyway, some people, you, you don't have to, what I'm getting at, my goodness, is you don't have to rush to get it out of the truck right away now, but we're really at the step now to where we can just get it lifted in the truck and start putting the, um, the bolts back on. So hopefully this goes well. All right, so five millimeter, and we'll, kind of weird angle. These little Allen screws here, Let's see if I can get you one. Come on, stop focusing on me. Uh, uh, right here, come on, there you go. 
these little Allen screws right here, these are five millimeters. So I'm gonna help Eric. I can't hold on to the camera. I forgot my tripod mount. So you guys are gonna hang back there while we install this real quick and we'll get back to you when we get it all um, basically up, pretty much. We're just gonna hand tighten it for now. So. All right, so I will say that we forgot to do one thing. Well, we didn't forget to do it, but we, I forgot to mention it to you guys. Um, you gotta remove the two studs. So there'll be, there'll be I think it's 17 total nuts and bolts. Uh, there, I think there's two nuts. Uh, you gotta remove those two studs for this install. Just put a vice grips on it, spin it out. I apologize, I greatly apologize. I should have covered that. That's not me. Um, that's not something I typically skimp over or I skimp over. I greatly apologize to you guys for that. I should have. I don't know what happened. Um, but anyways, this install, I would recommend doing it with two people. You can do it with one person. Um, I really would recommend installing it with two people just because it's easier to get that uh, your hands on it and up in there when somebody's putting in the new bolts versus somebody holding the pan in there. So like I said, I apologize greatly. I should have covered uh, taking those two studs out. I really didn't do it. Uh, that's, that's again, that's my apologies. That's unlike me, that's uncanny of me, you could say. So. Um, Again, I'm sorry, I didn't cover it, but make sure you take those two studs out, you have to do that. You don't have to do anything special, put a vice grips on, they'll spin out for you. Once you take them out, the new bolts will be able to go right up in there just like normal, so keep that in mind, take those two studs out. Yeah. All right, so we've got the new pan in now, we're about to do the torque sequence. Uh, we're gonna plug this in first so we don't forget about it because people tend to, f just that easy. People tend to forget, let's get a zoom, there we go. People tend to forget about that easy stuff, so. Look at that Fumoto drain. Oh man, that is freaking sexy. All right, so here we've got the torque sequence that you need to go with, so keep this in mind. Understand that the transmission pan is facing this way. So make sure you understand when you're looking at this, you're looking at, okay, you've got one here, but you're actually gonna be looking at it more so like this, all right? So you've got one um, is over to basically your left if you're looking straight on at the transmission pan. That is gonna be an 89, hold on. It's gonna be 89 inch pounds. So keep that in mind. Follow that torque sequence that you got right here and you'll be set to go. They also give you, when you get to that point here of that cross member, where is it down here? Da, 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 right there. 74 foot pounds for tightening that, uh, the cross member bolts as well. Look at you and your headlight. There we go. There you are. <laughs> so Eric's, Eric's got his fancy light on now, and I still have a ball one. Yeah, you need one. I know, I need to buy one. So these little things here, Eric's got one in his hand. Let's turn some lights on here. Oh, they died, we didn't turn them off. Show them your Allen wrench. All right, so these right here, these Allen wrenches, these are extra long. We just got Pittsburgh ones. <clears throat> still go battling that cold. Highly suggest using these. All right, by the way, for this Fumoto drain, straight out is open, and then you can push it down, and you turn it, and that's closed. That is beautiful, you guys. Absolutely beautiful. Open. Closed. Yes, we use torque wrenches, you guys. They're very important. Is that a Craftsman one? You got that from Lowe's? No, I got it from... Sears. Sears? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll reiterate it, 89 inch pounds and here's your torque sequence. Again, if you look at the oil pan, this is how your oil pan sits. So keep that in mind. Just, it's important to keep this paper the same orientation of the oil pan. It just makes things a lot easier if you orientate it the right way. And then again, if you have somebody with you, especially in something like this where you're going through a torque sequence, it's really important to have someone with you to help you keep on track of what you're doing. Like I said, two hands is always better than one and two minds is always better than one as well. So, well, it would be four hands is always better than two. Four hands better. Four hands is always better than two. One, two minds is always better than one. So you get, <laughs> you get the point. We're gonna torque sequence these 89 inch pounds and uh, we'll get to the cross member next. See you in a little bit. Again, this is what's really nice about having two people is you can do this obviously with one people, plenty of, always, plenty of people do this by themselves, but it's nice to have 
one person go around torquing and he was do one, I would cross it off and then I would write one that we did completed it. Go over to two, cross it off while he was doing it and then I would write two once it's completed, yada, 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 and go all the way around and do that. It's just a good way to make sure your torque sequence is done right. Like I said, it's nice to have two brains on it, making sure you're doing it the right way. There he is again back there with his headlamp. Uh, I still need one. There you go. <laughs> but now we're gonna go ahead and get the crossbar back on there. And that again is a, again, the instructions are great. D-Max Store, thank you so much for everything you guys do. These instructions are outstanding. Um, we got 74 foot pounds, and then you get to install all the skid plates. So we're gonna go ahead and do that next and finish up this video, you guys. Oh. And then we're gonna go ahead and torque this down. The torque setting is gonna be a 74 foot pound. So remember that it's important to torque your stuff down. And then of course here in the North, we will spray this down with a little fluid film after we're taking it apart, just to re-coat this now that we've kind of, you know, taken some of that coating off of there. All right, so the final step now is now that we got uh, the bolt, the cross motor put back on, torque down, Eric's gonna go ahead and put that skid plate back on that we took off. It's what, a 15 millimeter? Yep. 15 millimeter bolt or socket size for those bolts. You're gonna go ahead and put that back on. There's no torque spec rating that I know. You probably look it up if you really want to. Uh, just good and tight, it's pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed, guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it was a fun experience. It was a good install, it was a good uninstall. Like I said, I apologize. I did not tell you in the instructions to take out those studs. Please read the instructions. Whenever you do any type of install like this, follow along. D-Max Thor, thank you so much for everything you do. Uh, those instructions are outstanding. Um, I cannot, I gotta give props to that. Great instructions. So, like I said, read the instructions. Do this properly. Don't forget to take out those two studs so that you can put all the Allen screws or Allen bolts back in there properly. It's a five millimeter. We suggest those long Allen wrenches or uh, yeah, the Allen wrenches. Yeah, yeah, what the heck. Brain farting, been a long day. But anyways, good process. I don't know, what do you say there? Hour? Yeah. About an hour? Yeah, about an hour with no issues, No, about an hour. This is a Southern truck. So it's kind of helps a little bit, but I'd say even on my truck, it'd be about an hour or so. You done? Yes. Okay. We'll see you guys in the next video.